Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Quest. This is Pastor Daryl Garrett. Um, kind of rushed on time, so I don't have the lighting set up and everything else, but so I'm just going to jump right into it for today. But uh, I want to talk about growing despite the pain. Uh, that may sound like a bit of a unusual topic, but uh, bear with me. I want to read to you something from Romans chapter 8. I think most of you know this, but uh, in the 8th chapter of Romans, Paul wrote this. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, how will he also, excuse me, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who separated us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Paul's trying to tell us we're going to go through some trials. Uh, skip down again to uh, verse number 37. He said, No, in all of these things, in what things? All of our trials. In all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the things present nor future or uh, any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, a few days ago, I was reading something that really caught my attention, and uh, I've been thinking about it quite a bit. Bear with me a minute. I realized I didn't shut my phone off. I need to do that because it's sure enough going to ring. Anyway, I found this article that, uh, and I'm sure everybody that I'm speaking to knows all about post-traumatic stress disorder, or at least you're aware of it, but researchers are now writing about and promoting the notion of post-traumatic growth. The line of thinking is that adversity can actually lead to growth. Now, I have to wholeheartedly endorse that. Another line of thought in that article was that the highest levels of growth cannot even be achieved without adversity. You know, it's kind of like, think about weightlifting. They say, no pain, no gain. You've got to push yourself to the limits of pain and beyond that in order to grow. Adversity does not mean automatic growth, though. Hear that again. Yes, we can grow through pain and adversity, but adversity does not mean automatic growth. Uh, the outcome is often determined by how you respond to that adversity. Uh, the, the great author, Ernest Hemingway, wrote something that I want to share with you. I quote him. He said, Sooner or later, the world breaks everyone, and afterwards, many are strong at the broken places. Man, that is a brilliant statement that he made. And sometimes it's true that Sometimes, because of our brokenness, because of our pain, we grow so much stronger. But the truth of the matter is, sometimes people write beautiful things, but it doesn't really work in their life. If you know anything about Hemingway, his pain and personal problems became so great that he took his own life. On the other hand, though, we find Joseph in the Bible. Joseph is probably one of my favorite characters. I've got two or three outside of Christ, of course. Uh, that I really love talking about, reading about, studying. Joseph is one of those guys. Joseph is a guy, just real quickly, let me just kind of give you a synopsis. Uh, he was hated by his brothers. They betrayed him, threw him into pit, sold him into slavery, where as a slave he was falsely accused of rape, cast into a prison where he stayed for the next 13 years. And the interesting thing about it is in Genesis 5, uh, chapter, excuse me, Genesis chapter 50, verse number 20, in the New Living Version, it says it this way, God intended it all for good. Man, th there's something there that we have to really think about. God intended all that Joseph went through for good. Does that mean God necessarily caused it all to happen? No, but... Through it all, God was working. And sometimes we need to recognize how God is working even through our trials, through our hardships, through our persecution. You know, Jesus warned us that we would be hated for his own namesake. So just because you're going through a hard time, don't feel like God has forgotten you. He's got his eye on you. Hey, Lauren, good to see you, hon. I personally believe 
that the key to this post-traumatic growth that they wrote about is seeing God in it all, seeing God in all things, and drawing close to him in the midst of our hardships, uh, trusting him when you can't understand the situation, when nothing makes sense at all. You know, there's many times I've prayed, I'm just being as real with you as I know how to be. I have prayed and said, God, I don't understand you right now. I don't like what's happening, but I trust you. The way we grow is just simply that. We may not understand it. We may not like it. We may despise what we're going through. But Lord, I trust you because you know the end from the beginning and I'm going to trust you to get me where I need to go. See, when it comes to serving God, <clears throat> excuse me, there are two sides of the coin. There is success and then there is suffering. We like the success part. Man, that's why this prosperity gospel thing is so popular. Man, who doesn't want to get rich? Who doesn't want to have gold? Who doesn't want to have silver? Who doesn't want to drive $300,000 cars? We like that kind of talk. But they're suffering. Both ends of that are part of God's plan. God called Paul into ministry. And when you look, read his call in Acts chapter 9, go read it, check it out, verse number 20. It says, I will show you how much you must, you must suffer for my namesake. God told him up front, you're going to suffer if you, if you follow me and if you serve me. But the hard times and the threat of hard times did not make Paul doubt his faith. Not just faith. I want to clarify something because a lot of people talk about faith. I'm talking about faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Maybe right now you're going through a hard time. Maybe you've been through a hard time recently. Maybe you don't understand what's happening. You know, somebody I dearly love, been dealing with them this morning, is going through a terrible situation right now. It's hurting. It's ripping them apart. My advice to them is, Get even closer to God than you've ever been before. See, when you're going through pain, when you're going through trials, instead of running from God, draw closer to Him. I want to tell you, you can let that thing that is haunting you, the thing that is tormenting you, you can let it become your casket, or you can let it be, make you better than you ever were before. That's what Hemingway was talking about. Hemingway had the right words. He said those things can make you stronger. But he took his own life because he didn't have the means. The means is Jesus Christ. In all these things, we were more than conquerors. And if we stopped right there, we're in Ernest Hemingway's shoes. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, Christ Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to give your life to him. If you don't know how, if you've got questions, feel free to call me, to text me. I'll, I'll give you my number, 309-335-6480. I'd love to talk with you, meet with you if I need to, but I want to say it again. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. The only way you're going to come out on top of everything, oh, occasionally you might, but the way you're going to come out on top, give your life to Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for once again stopping by here at The Quest. Follow me each day, Monday through Saturday. I do these little 5 to 10 minute devotionals. Sometimes I run a few minutes over that. Sunday mornings I give a message from the Word. We're going to, within the next couple of weeks, be starting some online Bible studies. If you want more information about The Quest, look me up on my website, www.thequest.life. Thequest.life, no spaces. God bless you. Come back and see me again at the Quest. I love you. I'm praying for you.